Now, let's buckle down to a discussion this morning. You're watching AM Live, the Leadership Forum, and today we are asking who will lead us tomorrow? That is the topic of the day. Who will lead us tomorrow? And developing leaders places a huge responsibility on us today that goes beyond telling those future leaders what we think. To develop leaders, we must not only envision the leaders we want tomorrow, but we must behave in the manner of the leaders we want to see. We may not like the leadership or lack of it that we see today, but if our reaction to anything we don't like is anger, outrage, hatred, and vicious rhetoric, we're losing those values by way of example. Unwittingly, we perpetuate hatred, outrage, and vulgarity in the leaders of tomorrow. They learn to lead by watching us lead. Martin Luther King succeeded because he calmly but passionately painted a picture of a world that appealed to our morality. He shared a positive idea to replace a negative or a negative idea without attacking other people. His example had moral weight. He was silenced by hatred. Hatred and anger is an idea without reason. It's unreasonable and rudderless opinion with no foundation. We must be the leaders we want to see developed in the generation that follow us. If you want leaders who listen, who are understanding, compassionate, civil, and respectful, then we must display those values in our dealings with what we see happening around us. If not, we are the problem. If we want others to respect us and listen to us, we must respectfully listen to them. We talk when we should be listening. If we believe people should be respectful of each other, then we must be those people. Returning in kind is tempting and sometimes funny, but it does nothing but add to the discord we see around us. Real leaders resist the temptation and rise above it. Our response should be one that is conscious and empathetic of other person's frustration and often misplaced angst. To do anything else only adds to the destructive division we see today. Real leaders connect. They don't divide. They focus on similarities, not differences. We often think that if I don't yell, I won't be hurt. But we aren't hard because we are yelling. The most strident voices is not the leader. Harsh words do not connect with others. Blood in the streets is not a mature response to disagreement. And of course, we want now to go to a guest this morning and who will talk to us about who will be leading us tomorrow. Do we have a death of leaders in this country? We, do we face a crisis of leadership in the country? People are always talking about 2022. Are those the only leaders that we can choose from? But who is that person that has the nobility of character to be our leaders? Allow me this morning to introduce our guests who are with us with, with me, and I'll walk over to join them today because of only three of us. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. Right. Good early in the day, of course, or early in the morning, not early in the day. I introduce uh, Oliver Kisaka, who is with us with, that, uh, with us this morning. Also, we're joined today by Reverend uh, Geoffrey and Jenga, who is with us this morning, also will talk to us. He was here yesterday, yes, sir, right? Yes, Come on, face now on the <laughs> I am live. And also, Mary Mukindia will give you their profiles much, much later in the course of a program. But just to set the tone for the conversation this morning, tomorrow, are we facing a leadership crisis? Who will lead us tomorrow? Do we have people who they have, you know, those uh, virtues that we espouse? People who have nobility of character that we we yearn for people who can be honest in a time when honesty is such a, a lonely word, right? Do we have at least a list of examples that we can pick out and say, yes, this is a person that we think can lead this particular country? Or who do you think, from your own estimations, should be the leaders of tomorrow? Let's just continue with uh, Dr. Kisaka. You had set the tone, so we'll continue with you. Let's, let's move on, and then we'll move on now to the lectern much, much later in the course of the program. Yeah, Dibal, personally, I'm quite hopeful. Um, is, one thing about leaders is that they, they manifest when the situation requires it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we may not be seeing anyone whom we think uh, has the kind of qualities we would, we would wish to embrace doesn't mean the leaders are not there. Mm -hmm. In any case, they may actually arise if the situation got much worse. Yes. Uh, my point, therefore, is that yes, they are leaders. Uh, some of them haven't been given any chance to demonstrate their leadership. Um, our education system doesn't train people to be leaders. Mm -hmm. It trains people to be consumers. Yes. The kind of uh, examples we have from current leadership is that uh, leadership, you, you, leadership is positional. Uh, it is it's a position you take mm -hmm. and you take it for the purposes of enriching yourself. Mm -hmm. The model is wrong. But, but leadership has to do with ability to see where we ought to be going, 
the faith to believe that it is possible to achieve it and capacity to mobilize people towards that direction. And I think there are many leaders in this country, great leaders. Mm -hmm. Right, Mary, good morning. Good to see you. Morning. Nice to see you, Tabao. Mm -hmm. I'm really thinking about it. And whilst I agree with Mr. Kisaka, I think, yes, there are actually leaders across different spectrums. There are leaders within the business community, there are leaders in the NGO, there are leaders in the church, there are leaders in the youth. I really have a lot of time for the youth. They are showing a lot of leadership. There are leaders in women groups, in women leadership. We've seen many come up. But I think at the level where we pay attention, because these are the people who are supposed to make policies and mm -hmm. set directions, mm -hmm. Um, at that level of political leadership, and I must say sometimes even within the fourth estate, which I think is a critical part, we don't see the leadership that we deserve as a country. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are the ones who choose them, but what I see increasingly happening is that the barriers and the cost of getting into leadership, one is so expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, the level and the amount that it needs to campaign and to get into leadership is so high, extraordinarily high, that you find it's not able for a lot of people who genuinely would love leadership. Number two, the cost of going into leadership, if it's in civil service or in leading corporations that are public, uh, we've started a hue and cry on corruption and not targeting at the right places, that you find people are reluctant to be leaders because nobody wants to have that sting, that when you're trying to do good, when you take the moral courage and make decisions that you know are good because mistakes happen, the hammer sometimes is so hard because they don't take the hammer at the right mm -hmm. corruption levels mm -hmm. that you find people saying, I don't want to get into this leadership because what will happen to me, to my name, how be smeared. So I think we have to find a way to open the space where mm -hmm. even in political leadership or leadership of public institutions, people feel comfortable to be in and not leave them to people who really don't care about their reputations. So I see a quagmire, but the light for me in the tunnel is the younger people. I think the people I would like us to be the leaders of tomorrow. I'd like to see somebody of 35. I'd like to see somebody of 36. I'd like to see somebody yes. of 38 because they're thinking very differently. The world of tomorrow tomorrow really needs people that are quite different from us, our generation, our kind of thinking, because they are, you need to be fast, you need to be innovative. If you look at what the statistics are saying, 70% of the world's workforce in 2030 will be from Africa. Mm -hmm. Who will be leading those people? What will that workforce look like? What should we be doing today? We need a whole kind of leap to be able to produce those type of people. And I don't see us, our age, the decade behind us being able to provide. We need the kind of m solutions, the quick leap in technology, the mobile technology, to be able to say we have to turn this thing around and change so many things, mm -hmm. including the education system. So, so you, you mentioned there is actually that chasm, that the, uh, it is between us, the next generation, and the next. Yeah. So how are we trying to abridge this particular chasm? And I think that will be also uh, yeah. what we'll be looking yeah. at as well. But let's hear from our Reverend uh, 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 Geoffrey this morning, who is uh, a corporate governance expert, also he was here yesterday. We are talking about still leadership, right? Yeah. Let's continue with you and uh, get your sentiment. Who will lead us tomorrow? Uh, thank you, Dibal. Um, reduced at its basic level, leadership is influence. And we are asking who will influence tomorrow? And I will say tomorrow will be led by today. And what do I mean by that? The decisions we make today will determine the kind of leaders we have Tomorrow, I mean, financial experts will tell you, if you don't save today, forget about a good life tomorrow, and unless, of course, you want to be a thief. And we have enough of those. And therefore, the, the decisions we make uh, will, will, will very much determine where, what kind of leadership we have tomorrow. I think you summarized it, and I think my colleagues here have done as well. Um, if you're building a, a leadership that has no moral, in fact, I call it a hollow, a people who are hollow, we will not have the kind of leaders we are looking for to lead us tomorrow. And the only way to move away from that hollow uh, leadership is just build values. If we have leaders who, have, who are buying exams, for instance, that's a big thing today, that there is a racket somewhere buying exams for who? For the students. To do what? 
to pass exams without working so that at the end of uh, this period we will have the media you know show us uh, parents lifting their, their kids up in the in the sky celebrating what we are celebrating nothing mm -hmm. because basically by stealing exams if a father will steal exams for their children we are destroying the future tomorrow i i understand the gap between the young and the old but that doesn't worry me too much the reason why that doesn't worry me because i'm looking for that one person who will who will stand and for me it doesn't matter at what age if somebody will stand and say i'll make a difference indeed they can however having said that i think we need to look at the youth and prepare them for the longest time we've been saying that the youth are the leaders for tomorrow really and what are we doing to invest in their lives we are buying exams so that my son may get an a he does not deserve become a medic and then obviously um, cut people the wrong places and then leave things in their tummy we, we've got to ask ourselves, are we investing enough in our young people? Are we giving them the role model? It's one thing for me to keep telling young people they're the leaders of tomorrow, but am I giving them a chance today? And I have a big heart for the family business. My focus now is largely on the family business uh, in, in, in my mediation uh, profession, because I've seen a big gap. The older generation makes a lot of money. They create lots of wealth. And then they, they die. And what do you see in the, in the incoming generation? The leaders of tomorrow never connected with their business. And you may write the will and whatever else you want to do, but the people we leave, they did not connect with their business. They know that there is money, but they do not know how the business works. So when they come, all they want is money. And today we have conflicts galore, Thank just you. about anywhere you look. Thank you. Thank you. Well, right. young people did not connect with that business. Right. Right. We need to do something about that. We need to do something. Yeah, we take a short break right now. But also critically that we need to ask ourselves is if they are truly buying, the parents actually, uh, people were perpetrating this hideous act of buying you know, examinations for their students. We need to question the act. Is it because a sheer dint of hard work does not pay in this country? that if I go, I read hard and I get my A, I will not, I'm not even uh, assured that I'll get, you know, a, a job after have, you know, so, so good uh, sterling credentials behind me. To a large extent, right? Is it because now the, the parents, they fear, yes, even if he works hard, to still, a large, to a how, large many, extent. how many people out there who have, uh, who are graduates with good papers, uh, they're still at home uh, with sterling uh, you know, uh, credentials. Let me, still, let me respond to that. You, to will, you, will, you will, sir, after, yeah. after, after the break. We want to take a station break right now. When we circle back, of course, we continue with our discussion with our panelists. We'll hear from them, from electors as well. Who will lead us tomorrow? Do we have leaders who have, of course, what it takes as far as character is concerned and values that we espouse as a country that we'll see them standing before us to lead us? And who will be this? Right, his phone is ringing. The wife maybe is calling, saying he's looking handsome. This is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Reverend uh, uh, Dega, we take a short break right now. We'll see you later. Welcome back. Who will lead us tomorrow? That is the problem question we are asking, which really also acts as our topic this morning. And remember, also, you get to drive the show with us. You can head over to our Twitter handle, AMLiveNTV, is our Twitter handle, AMLiveNTV, our profile name on Facebook, and 20686, our SMS portal. And, uh, of course, also our numbers will be up momentarily for you also to chime in. Uh, you can call in, ask questions, or share your contribution as, as far as this topic is concerned. Now, up on the lectern this morning, we have Dr. Oliver Kisaka, who is the MD of Corat Africa, and he's ready to go. Uh, loaded, of course, uh, with his points this morning. We want to hear, what does he think? Do we have good leaders who will lead us tomorrow in this country? Okay. Oliver, you have five minutes beginning now. Right. Dibal, thank you, and I want to greet all Kenyans this morning, wherever they are, and uh, viewers from across East Africa. I come from Korat Africa, which is an organization that is involved in the development of leaders uh, in matters of learning, consultancy, and research, and which also offers accommodation for people who are seeking to retreat to learn about leadership and and other aspects of their lives. I stand here listening to uh, 
this question that Ibal has raised uh, with two thoughts. The first is that I'm very hopeful that there are leaders. Those leaders are in this country. Uh, I think I have said on this very uh, program before that the problem in democracy is that it never gives you the best. Democracy is a populist uh, approach to governance. So the people you get are the popular, <laughs> not necessarily the best. And in a situation when, where money is concerned, where people abuse each other, where things are dirty, decent people uh, keep away. And so it doesn't mean there are no leaders in Kenya. It just means that uh, we haven't had yet leaders of that type who are courageous enough to enter the fray. But the other side of it, Dibal, is to say that perhaps the concept of leadership is what's lacking. Um, I think that many more Kenyans take a management approach to life, not a leadership approach. Leaders, leaders are not, leaders can't be prevented by anything. When, when Kenya was in a difficult situation of colonialism, Kenyatta arose. He didn't ask permission from anybody. Circumstances were not conducive. They arose. Nyerere arose. You know, Kwame Nkrumah arose. A group of African young people in university in the UK in 1945 met in the Pan-African Conference and they were discussing the liberation of Africa. I'm just saying that you will know a leader when there is a situation that requires leadership and the leader will arise. They will not ask for anybody's permission. They will not be looking for money. There's a young man in parliament now from one of the Meru constituencies. He's a great leader. He knew he needed to be in parliament. He had no money. He took his bike. He was known as the leader of one sweater. I don't know whether you remember this young man. He's in parliament today. So I'm just saying we need to arouse the concept of leadership in a different way. And, and I am arguing that I think our greatest problem in Kenya today is that we are not developing the leaders. We are not creating room for leaders to express themselves and to arise and to demonstrate what they are able to do. And we are reaching that point where people will arise out of the fire that is in their hearts. A leader brings vision, vision of a different uh, institution, a different nation, a different church, a different family. These are the kind of people who are called leaders. They don't, they don't count the cost. The, the payment for the vision is in the vision. If a true vision arises, it gets people to fund it from wherever. So my argument today is that let's, as Kenyans, stir up the young people. Let's tell the young people to dare to risk to arise. Let's encourage them to express themselves. Let's tell them there is hope, not even just tomorrow, today. Let's see what they can do. And I think those of us who are in positions of leadership uh, or in positions of management are hindering them because we are keeping them down. We are denying them platforms. Let, let the media create room for them to arise because they are there. Um, and so my argument today is that let's develop the leaders. They are born but they are also developed, and I think we can create room for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Oliver Kisaka there. And he says the concept of leadership is lacking, and uh, we normally use the management approach to life, not the leadership approach. Uh, he talks about leaders who should arise, not, uh, you know, being cherry-picked, you know. The situation on leadership that actually is espousing here, people who see the need and they try and feel that particular need, people who will arise, uh, out of the fire that is in their heart, do you have enough fire that is burning and you're passionately, uh, or you're passionate and you're very impassioned about Kenya that you want to see a different kettle of fish as far as leadership is concerned? Dare to resist, um, uh, dare, dare to resist to, to, to arise, right? That also people in position of management should not actually be the ceiling that they're preventing people to arise as well on position or in position of leadership. Right now we want to hear from Mary Mukindia. She's the, the, an executive coach and she's heading over now to the lect and also to talk to us on this particular topic that we're discussing. Remember, as I mentioned, we want to hear from you as well. I can see reactions also, the rush of tweets on, uh, on Twitter, 
on our Twitter handle. We'll read them much, much later in the course of the program. But in the meantime, keep them coming. Also, our numbers will be up for you to drive the show with me. Let's hear from you and uh, also you can share your contributions and paper them with your questions as well. Mary, you've got five <laughs> minutes beginning now. Thank you, Debao. Kenyans, Kenyans. Do you know that the mean average age of in Kenya is 19 years? Do we know that 80% of our population is 35 years and younger? I'm in a small 3.9%, and I don't even consider myself that old. And really, 0 to 14, 40%, 15 to 24, 19%, but really, 80% of our population is below 35. And that's why I'm saying that the leadership now, starting today, has to come from our younger people. And it's already coming from our younger people. If you look at what has happened in the business, I'm in a, in a foundation called the Bogwa Rosemary Foundation, and we've been running it for the last four years. We see incredible young business people, 21 years, 22 years, 25 years, doing ethical businesses, making money, growing the economy, employing people. And these are kids from Kibera, from Kiambu, from Kisumu, from Eastern Nairobi, Western Nairobi, these are young people who are providing leadership in business. I see young lawyers. So I have a lot of hope about what we can do. Uh, my colleague, um, Mr. Kisaka, and I fully agree with him because I was thinking that in the past, change has come because it was forced. We were under colonialism, so Kenyatta under Rose, we had independence, we had uh, uh, Odinga, we had all the young Amburubis, all the people who came up because we were fighting for um, independence. Then we were fighting for economic independence. There was a lot of growth in fighting for a chance for the African to take over from the white man, for the Indian, and get their own equity share within that fabric. But what happens is that people get relaxed, they get lazy, and change has always got to be instituted by force, either by a positive force by an, or a negative force. And my fear is, if you look at what's happening across our neighborhood where we have this young man called Bobby Wine, I had no idea who Bobby Wine is. And there was so much hula balua Bobby Wine, I had to Google him and go on the internet and YouTube. And I loved his music. And I started listening to what he was saying. And I realized no wonder he was such a powerful force. Because he was talking about representation of diversity, of poor people, of women, or whatever. Because everybody had become very comfortable. I do not want to see that here. So my point is, we need to instigate change ourselves, our age and a little bit younger. Because unless we come up with solution-driven um, education, unless we are able to try and try again and get the courage to stand up, unless we are able to have the voices and the minorities of people, we do not want to have the change that will be forced to us that will be negative. And my view is that one of the biggest changes we can bring is through the education. We can actually, we are churning out a million people unemployed every day. We've got to change the whole education. We use 30% of our budget or a little bit over on education. What can we do to not do the traditional education, but be able to leapfrog? I see good things happening with technical education. The TVETs, uh, we've now got a ministry, we've got, got a PS. We've got to say that there are different layers of people. Where is the technical education, the artisans, who can get a different, uh, you know, a real li living as builders, as, as, as technical skills? And then what can we do with the education system to make sure that it's turning out innovative people, co communication-driven uh, people, so solution-driven people. Because like I said earlier, 70% of the world workforce by 2030 will be coming from Africa. Are we ready to provide this solution? Because if we're not, change will come, and change will come from the wrong angle. And we need to be very cognizant of that. And that's why I like sometimes at the media, though I bash you a little bit, you do have top 40 under 40. You have who are the young entrepreneurs. If you could showcase 
the good and the leaders at younger level, which is happening every day, the SMEs that are coming up, the young people that are providing solutions, there is a lot of good that we can showcase. Here's good leadership, even while the headline says, ring leaders of exam theft held. That will give us a contrast as a country, that will give us an hope, an aspiration to say, it is not, not doom and gloom as a headline. Yes, that is happening, but here are all the many good things that are happening in every single place. We have somebody like Joseph Kaim, he used to be the headmaster of Alliance. They've created Leadership Academy in South Africa. He came back here, he invested in something called the Nova Academies. Providing a different type of education that will suit the modern world, they're doing wonderfully. Look at all the schools that have come up through innovative practices of people who said, I don't believe in the public service system, I've provided education, good education. So the private sector have the solutions when the public sector fails, but it's not enough. So we have to join in and say, what can we do? And if we could showcase a lot of these positive things, then people would have the hope and a little bit of courage to say, even I will stand up and be counted and be that different people. But for me, the issues of youth and giving them more representation in government, in the counties, together with the women, I think will be able to get us to get out of this older, People who, at the moment, I think we have let down the economy while we did well in the past. Thank you, Kenyans. Thank you, Mary Mukindia. And of course, she says the change has come because it was forced. Change has to be instituted by force, either positive or negative. Uh, we need to in instigate change ourselves. And uh, she says also change uh, uh, can come through our education system. But looking at it right now, is it broken? Uh, do we really have uh, the right model of education for our children as well? If at all change is, not, is going to emanate from education sector, how we need uh, to change and overhaul the education system in this country as well. Youth and more representation uh, in uh, the upper reaches of government as well, they have to be represented adequately there as well. This is a sentiment of Mary Mukindia. Well, I would be expecting that uh, Mr. Uh, Reverend Jenga should be now walking over to, yeah, to the lectern, but he's still seated, uh, relaxing and uh, enjoying, uh, of course, the comfort of our studio this morning. But he's heading over, over the lectern right now and is going to speak to us as well much deeply on the leaders of tomorrow. Do we have them? Who will lead us tomorrow? That is a question that we're asking ourselves today. Good morning and thank you very much uh, for uh, this chance. I had said earlier that tomorrow will be led by today. Yeah. It's the decisions we make today. And we should desist from telling young people they're the leaders of tomorrow. I think we should prepare them and allow them. I said earlier that I have a big heart for the family business because I can see the struggle. Even as I mediate in their midst and I help them to reset through corporate, gov 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 corporate governance, I see the gap. And the gap is created by us not delegating effectively to them, and that could be a cliche, but sometimes cliches do work, that we are not bringing them in to do what I do, to live the life I live, and therefore they know that I make money, and I give them money, however I make that money, and should I leave, they have no clue what to do with the business. And I am appealing to the family business uh, to delegate effectively and let the young people come and manage. Writing a will is basically useless when you are gone because they will fight about the will. They will dismember it and they will dismember the estate uh, when you go. Um, I think I, I have learned something from the Asian community and we need to learn from each other. We are a, a diverse nation. They are strong on a discipleship. You may be going to Harvard, but we, when you come home, you go to that shop where your mother and father spend their time. They will carry food from home, and they will be there with you for the time that you're going to be on holiday. Should they go, you know for sure what happens in that business. And I want to tell um, those, especially those who have made resources, uh, those who have made real estate and they are good, doing well in business to understand, should they go, it is not the will that will help. It is that proper, um, real delegation that will happen. The other thing that concerns me is the development, I mean, the destruction of merit. We have destroyed merit in this country. We, used, we went to school so that we could get a job. 
Um, and some of us worked very hard. Um, and indeed, it was a reality because you worked very hard and found your way. Today, that is very, very debatable. Whether my hard work um, will get me what I'm looking for. And therefore, we have created an alternative way by destroying merit, we've allowed the thieves in this country to prosper. We've allowed, uh, um, uh, we have become a country of deals. In fact, we are betting. We are now a, a, a country of gamblers. Uh, and I think we are missing the point. We need to help people understand. We need to help people get back to merit. That my hard work can pay. That my integrity can pay. That um, if I work very hard, I'll get what I'm looking for. So, and, and this is coming mainly from the political leaders. The political leaders have a big influence in this country. And we, we look to see where they are going. If somebody has become rich, stinking rich, within a period of one year, two years, three years when they were in parliament, um, the question comes, how did that happen? It, there, it cannot be merit. Those people don't work much harder than other Kenyans or any other people for that matter. And we need to accept that we are destroying this country by creating this alternative gambling nation, by creating a people who don't believe in hard work, by creating people who don't believe in merit. It will happen tomorrow if we change our attitudes today. So what kind of qualities am I looking for? And I am, in a way, in agreement that situational leadership is real, that some, some situations will demand leadership. But I think there are irreducible minimums. I think we learned that from politics not too long ago. If we want to develop leadership in this country, we need to build integrity. People need to know that integrity pays. We need to have identify people who are hungry to lead. It will not happen otherwise. If I'm not hungry to lead, it will not happen. And then we need to promote hard work. But, and this is a big but, and this is important, we need to develop a godly nation. People need to know that there is a God in heaven who uh, determines who governs in the affairs of men. And the moment a nation drifts away from godliness, that nation will be destroyed, and that's a bankable truth. So what are we telling our children? We, are tell we need to give them hope. We need to help them understand it may be bad today, but there is hope tomorrow by allowing them room to operate, by allowing them to see that the decision then themselves make will impact their tomorrow. There's a big problem in this country, and I don't know whether it is this country or across uh, the world. The boy child is in trouble. I have related with so many of them, and they're meant to be leaders. They are the husbands of wives, and there is trouble because the boy child, and I don't know exactly where we lost it. I think we talked for too long, for the longest time, about the girl child. I think we need a balance and help the boy child understand he too has a role. As Mary Mukindia talks about the girl child, we need to have someone else talk about the boy child. Because in any case, you may have this superwoman, but she needs someone to marry. Those obviously those who want to get married. Thank you very much. <laughs> she needs a spider man. <laughs> and I can see Mary really nodding and not really she's she differs on the solution, totally. but I agree on the problem. <laughs> yeah, you can actually weigh in on that as we continue with the conversation. Why are you in disagreement? With what he said. <laughs> yes, I I disagree on the solution, but I agree on the problem. Yes, there is a problem mm -hmm. with the boy child. I'm a mother of a, of a, of a son. Yes, and I'm a mother of a daughter. Uh, and yes, there's, there's, there is a problem if you look at the countryside, if you look at the level of drunkenness, if you look at the dropout rates, and the girl child has done wonderfully well. I actually think the problem has been the male, the man. The money is a problem? The man is a problem. The man, mm -hmm. the African man, has absconded from his role as the head of the household. Mm. And I remember this, I'll never forget it, it's always on my mind, Pastor Mbevi, he's preaching in our church about the role of the man. And he talked about the four Ps, and if I remember well, is that the man is the priest of the household. Mm -hmm. The man is the prophet of the household. The man is the provider 
of the household. The man is a, pro protector. Is a protector. protector. I think there was a fifth, but I remember always those. And there was a video cassette. I even bought them and gave them to a couple of people. That role, somehow, for whatever reason, and I think sometimes it's because of bringing in Western values, mm -hmm. and we lost our way somewhere, mm -hmm. and the man lost his place in the home. Where does he sit? When he comes home, the sitting room has been occupied by the women. And the they're TV. watching TV and they're watching the, the, with the children mm. and they're watching things of people dancing and jiggling their hips in funny ways. Mm -hmm. He feels embarrassed to be sitting with the children and the women watching this thing. And it's true, the things on our TVs are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't watch mm -hmm. a lot of it. I watch nice programs like this, no. that are educative, of course, always. Oh, thank you. No, a good program. Mm -hmm. So you find that that hour five, six, seven, the things, even those um, soap operas, they have a lot of stuff. So he runs away. There's no space for him. In our tradition, you know, we had the vingira, the hat. Yes. Luo tradition had a hat. Almost every tribe has a place for a man. So he goes to the bar and waits until everybody has slept and done their things or plaited their hair or the women group have come to talk. Because he doesn't go to a kitchen, it's not his place. He can't go to a bedroom, there's a baby, there are things, there's a maid is coming in or whatever. So he lost his place. Uh. And because of this thing of also making it, making it, making it, he's out there supposedly doing business or whatever, which only goes to about seven, eight, and then they are drinking. Mm. So my view is that there's a problem with the man. And that's why there's even this other Man Enough program that I really love because, you know, we had Alabastron and others that we went to. But the woman, we're always close to things. We're in charge of the household. We're very good managers. We're into detail. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we take over. But the example is coming from the wife. So the daughter see the example every day, but the son doesn't see an example because the man is AWOL. AWOL meaning absent without official leave or something, you know, when <laughs> yeah. soldiers leave and they dis desert, it's called a wall. The man has gone a wall. But why and is the man really there's going? no man for an example, and that's why you have <laughs> the problem. Let me make a comment on that. Yes. I, I think, uh, Mary, you are quite right in your analysis of what is taking place in, in the house. What you may not, uh, what perhaps you haven't thought about, mm. Are you, and I think you have read Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. Yes. Men. It's a famous one. <laughs> men can only fight women so far. Mm. You, sh you should actually know that. Mm. When a man marries a woman, he's usually the one who makes the proposal, makes the moves, yes. in, at least in the African mm. setting. Mm. Even if the man comes home, how strong? He listens to the woman. So, to, you may think he has not heard you, <laughs> mm. but he will go to think about what you have said. Mm. Okay? So many times, w women actually have taken more power than they should. Yeah. And they have made it impossible for him because he only has two alternatives. Either to beat you up or to give you space. He prefers not to beat you up. Some There's no middle ground of talking. Of the uh, no, There's not talking, only beating you know, or going. No, no, uh, mm. talking exists, and I've already said, mm. he listens. Okay, he listens. Yes, even when he's harsh and you talk, you don't think he has not heard. Okay. Now, what, what, when he comes with the idea, he will not ah. say, you are the one who told me. Yes. He will That's say, true. That's true. I think we should go this direction. Mm. Mm. So, a woman should realize that there is a great responsibility for you to recognize the man as the leader. Yes. If you don't, he will not force it on you. Yes. Mm. Okay. And so you are driving him out of the sitting room and now blaming him for being mm. away. Mm. And I think that balance needs to I be hear. restored. I, I have sp spoken many times and said, this human rights message has a wrong twist mm. to it. Mm. Because it, it makes the woman arrogant and proud. It makes the woman a, a, a fighter. And I'm not saying women should allow themselves to be abused. I'm just saying there's a way women talk that gets into the hearts of men. Yeah. Mm. A woman doesn't need to use no. fists or guns. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if you, I mean, not if a woman and her daughters, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry about that. If a woman and her daughters do not recognize that their father is the head of the home, he comes in, nobody bothers that he has come, People are seated in ways that he cannot displace them. Mm. Mm. 
he has only two choices either to say get up or to say oh, right, oh. Find okay i have no oh, place oh, here okay. so uh, allow me to bat in a bit no, and then before yes. we hear for breath yes. because first of all we need to ask ourselves why are the women also maybe sort of uh, taking the role of a man mm -hmm. is it because we have spineless men who don't mm -hmm. make decisions, mm -hmm. who are slow uh, on the uptake in terms of reacting mm -hmm. situation, and then the women, they see the need and they plug, they're quick off the mark yeah. than the men, right? Uh, we, we have men who don't take the leadership role at home. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, naturally a woman will just follow suit to actually s submit to you. Yeah. It doesn't have to be enforced or really you to lift your fist. Mm -hmm. So are our men also somewhat really not taking responsibility in the first place? Mm -hmm. Are they spineless in terms of making these hard decisions that the women have to push them or push the envelope? That we're seeing these things happening at home. Why can't you? And if you're talking about space in the house, uh, why are we even in these modern times when we're building our houses not considering a room for the man? Maybe a library, right? <laughs> Where you can go and just have your own office yeah, in the man house. Cave. Yeah, yeah, man cave. If you cave, find, it yeah. works. Yeah. Mm. You have a library and uh, you have, yes, uh, maybe sort of a prayer room, a library where a man, oh, a room to just reflect. That is your own space. We don't consider this, Rev. So are we to blame the women? No, mm. we are not, isn't it? Well, um, I don't think it will help to blame anybody. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do is recognize the problem and work we'll it solve it and do yes. what needs to yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. I am a firm believer in women empowerment. Mm -hmm. I am a firm believer uh, in equality because really there is absolutely nothing wrong with a woman. Uh, and for now we know there is everything right with her mm -hmm. because she's doing very well. Yes. But I think we need to strike a balance. And because I talk to young couples over and over and over again, it is something we need to work at. The role models that we look up to are not right. What I would want people to do is to go to the Bible, to go to scripture, and begin to see what uh, Mary was talking about, the various roles. Because you see, we all have different roles. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to take them seriously. Yes. Mm -hmm. The protector has to protect. Mm -hmm. The priest has to preach. The provider has to provide. Mm -hmm. Now, you have men who have refused to work. You really have no excuse. You've they have not got, th you've there's got, no work. You've <laughs> got to get up and go and work. There's no and employment. I'm telling young, young men who are looking at me that you have no choice. You have no option in life. You've got to go there and get involved. Competition is not wrong. I think we can achieve many things when we compete. I think what is not right is when competition leads to evil things, like you begin to cut people up because mm -hmm. they, they defeated you. But I think competition, I mean even conflict, and, and, and I, am, um, uh, I teach a lot about conflict and how to manage it. Conflict is not necessarily wrong. And people need to agree, and younger people for that matter, they need to get out there and compete. Mm -hmm. And I'm encouraging these young men who are waking up every day. Mm -hmm. And all they do is loiter around at the shopping center. Mm -hmm. All they do is to go and drink mm -hmm. and then come home and demand food. I think it's wrong. It is inexcusable. But reference, They've got to get yeah, out and do what needs of, to be done. One of the contradictions, and here I agree with Mr. Kisaka absolutely, yeah. about the role of both of them contributing to this, because I really do agree that yes. sometimes the woman will take the space and take it too hard, mm. and there are ways of working together. Mm. But what Dibal said, asked you as you were saying, they have to go to work. What if there's no work? You see, society is, the, a woman can be in any situation. She can go to the marketplace. Yes. She can be a maid. She can be yes. a CEO. Yes. She can look after mm -hmm. children. There mm -hmm. are many activities somehow that are open to the woman yes. that sometimes are not as open to the man. Yes. If he can't get a job, if mm -hmm. those youths in that service station, in that, um, sorry, in that uh, neighborhood shopping center cannot get jobs yes. because they don't have as much leeway to be able to, I'll babysit, I will, you know, I'm feeding the baby, I'm selling maize in whatever and doing all those little jobs that women are quite open to yes. and have a higher yeah. scope. You know, women yeah. are more socially mobile even yeah. than men. Yeah. What happens? And you see the South African situation yeah. where violence yeah. starts to breed. There's a backlash. Yeah against the society and particularly against the women because of what happened in apartheid you have the highest crime rate in the world the highest rape cases in the world mm -hmm. and that's what we fear that we're churning out a million people mm -hmm. into the population mm -hmm. and the women sometimes absorb better are able to do different things and you have youths and they lash and that's what i'm afraid of that unless we can start to look at very different innovative ways using technology being able to say let's have two streams as the government is trying to do 
And even on the exam cheating, there's a lot that's being done, particularly you see this year, mm -hmm. to stop all this, you know, uh, lack of merit on exams. You open two streams that when you finish high school or you finish whatever <coughs> school, you yeah. go into a technical stream as artisans, as painters, as as you know, welders, as all these things, as builders and so on, and the other one you take to a white collar job. Unless we put something, this is a ticking time bomb. Mm. The no, leadership no. will mm. come on you, whether Thank we you. like it or not, and it will be a very different uh, right. leadership. Right. Let's say from also, uh, uh, Oliver, because you said that uh, we have the management approach to life rather than leadership approach. <coughs> I'd yeah. love you to elucidate a bit on this so that we can get a clear understanding you, of that. You see, what happens, Dibail, mm. is that uh, populations are growing. So, Leadership must expand space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, cannot, you cannot keep um, maintaining status quo. Managers are good at receiving things and making sure that things are well maintained and okay. That's not what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. We are looking at people who are going to blow up the space, mm -hmm. open new avenues, create new things. In that sense, I would say, for example, that technology is is a visionary mm -hmm. explosion of space. Mm -hmm. M-Pesa alone has employed thousands, thousands of young people. But the side to me that I would like to emphasize is that we have demonized agriculture. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For me, for me the, the primary job that exists on earth given by God is agriculture. Absolutely. Yes. And when, when we make agriculture unproductive, it is a sad story for a ministry of agriculture to pay billions of shillings to fictitious people who never worked right. and make the farmers who worked actually not be able to sell their mm -hmm. maize, mm -hmm. destroy their effort, impoverish them, yeah. make them unproductive. Exactly that is a wrong example. That so, was, I mean, I'm just saying, there's no lack of jobs in Kenya. Personally, I don't buy the question that there are no lack of jobs in Kenya. There's only lack of integrity. That's how I argue. Now, and lack of innovation. You, 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 to you, this, yeah. Yes. So you see, if the young people, for example, doing their farm work, can find a place to market their goods mm. and get a fair share, they will go into farming and they will make a lot of money out, out of it. But we have demonized it. Mm. We determine prices after, after products are already out when people have already spent money mm -hmm. so that people are making losses continuously. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we need to create, we need to have, leadership is about creating new vision. Mm -hmm. And I use the example of this uh, M-Pesa and the Safaricom uh, idea because then you are saying somebody has thought about a new idea that was not there before mm -hmm. that now people can plug in at variously. We need those kind of innovations. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And they're there. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell yeah. you, there's so many young people doing those, even mm -hmm. agriculture ones. I know so many. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Let's see from uh, Rev on this. Um, I think we need to uh, have what I think they call the paradigm shift. We move away from what used to be to what is and what we can create. And mm -hmm. that's why I like what you're saying about creating alternatives. The greatest thing that has happened in this country or that could happen in this country has happened. We have devolution. Mm -hmm. Money has been sent to machinani. And if we took advantage of devolution, we can change many things. But we cannot lead today and tomorrow with the same thinking that was there yesterday. When this money is sent to, uh, to Mashinani, what is it doing? Is it absorbing these young people? Is it changing the, the face of agriculture? <laughs> is, it, is, is it changing uh, the way things are done? And I think we need to take advantage of that. Long uh, 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 gone are the days when we used to say there is no money. <laughs> we know in this country we have a lot of money. What we need are leaders of integrity who will also have a heart for this nation and the people of this nation. Stealing money and going to hide it abroad or wherever else they go to hide it does not help anybody at all. Mm -hmm. Even you, yourself, if you steal and go and hide it out there, mm -hmm. it helps other people. <laughs> We've got to open space. And if only we are willing to sit down with those young people and help them, they will not be at the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Right. To add on to what Reverend has said, uh, Dibal, I have a controversial argument. We don't know the meaning and use of money. Oh, is that so? <laughs> we think we think it is something to be stolen and to be kept. <laughs> to stash it in your house. Yes, that's uh, unfortunately. We don't leave out in our yes. I have in my wallet. I have in my wallet a two hundred thousand note of Zimbabwe money. Now. Yes, even now oh, I have okay. it. Yes, which cannot buy you a sweet. It can't. It can't buy you in Zimbabwe. So people think that when you have pepper, you are rich. 
this is money is a medium of exchange absolutely mm. it's only meant to cause us to exchange services let's tell all the people who are stealing kenyan money you are actually destroying the country you are taking away it's like the manna when israel was traveling from egypt mm. to canaan the lord told him just take enough for you for today we th there were some Kenyans there. They would take, <laughs> they, they, they would take for today to uh, and for for the next day, and then it, it would be, it would it would rot. Yeah. It rot. <laughs> Actually, if you if you steal money and stash it, it will rot. Yes. The it billion that you stole you stole ten years ago is no longer a billion. It has been destroyed by inflation, by very many things. And and I keep saying, what well, part of our problem is that we don't understand what money is and what is used for. We think it is something to steal and, and to, to keep All right. when it's actually meant to facilitate exchange of goods Fantastic. and services. Fantastic. We'll come to that point about education because uh, also Mary says that uh, we should actually instigate change uh, through education. What if the, the education system is broken? How will it ins instigate change when people are stealing? When also we have lecturers sleeping with students to, for them to be awarded grades as well? I mean, do we have a, 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 an integrity? or a very integral education system in the country as well. Our numbers are up, and uh, you should be able also now to call in, ask questions, and share your contribution. Also, uh, we have reactions on Twitter. I can be just read and sample some of them. Samuel Ruto says, when we say Kenya is rich in natural resources, we don't imply only minerals. We even include manpower. We have mm. plenty of good leaders. We only lack facilities to exploit them. That is uh, the reason why we do not give chance to many others. But uh, make limited choice or choices. Also, we have... Uh, uh, George and Donji are saying a very bad culture being inculcated in our youth. Everybody is looking for a shortcut mm -hmm. to wealth and fame, mm -hmm. not and hard work. work. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. Jacob uh, Abereum Talala says, Yes, Project Kenya started to face leadership crisis since its creation, in that we started to face horrors in moral, cultural, and social values, and we show. <laughs> and uh, seeing betrayals down uh, generations, we have also Huntington Mushera saying, Yes, Kenya has a crop of leadership that can spur development, but on the ballot, we fall for mediocrity and psychophones. Mm -hmm. And we have Nyash, we have leaders who lack values. Uh, mm -hmm. She says, also we have Pokwako. Yes, Kenya has such leaders, but not among the current. We need to educate our people about leadership and integrity. Mm -hmm. And then someone, Mutemi Mwinde, is watching from current, and he says, very true, sir, thank you. Uh, for tuning in. Also, we have son of a mother. Of course, he's a son of a mother. Empowerment is what we are waiting for. In fact, I will have the government to start a contract type of employment so as to accommodate the graduates' education no longer meets its expectations. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, um, it's Ken saying, no, not at all. If we did, they will have already done away with all these troubles. Uh, we're talking about who will be the leaders of tomorrow. Also, Kilemi Moridi saying, we don't, we do it to ourselves, people. We get dispiriting leadership because we made them that way in our own image and likeness. A Latin maxim captures it. Nemo dat quod non habet. You, can give, you can't give that which you don't possess. Mm. The dullness in our leadership started right with us. Those are some of your reactions here, many of them. And uh, now also we welcome you to continue also on the same with the phones which are up. Our phone lines, our numbers are on your screen right now. We have also Adere Kevin saying, I would like to share one adage with my fellow youth today, and he says this, if you do more than you asked to, you'll soon earn more than you worked for. Mm -hmm. right. Wow, that's really... Fantastic. Let's just go back to the uh, issue of education, yeah. a broken system. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember also I watched uh, on uh, YouTube uh, Sir Ken Robinson really talking about how, cre yes. how schools yes. actually, our education, kills creativity yes right yes. because we are going through a one channel this is a curriculum mm -hmm. it, regardless of what your mm -hmm. talent is mm -hmm. we are channeled through mm -hmm. one then we we have a mass production mm -hmm. of of graduates who are thinking the same so we pass them you know in hearts through the system and then they're out in the market as well mm -hmm. i mean as well then coming out of there you you lack creativity because maybe you're a musician but you the system mm -hmm. told you no 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 mm -hmm. you are suited to be an engineer mm -hmm. you have this the papers but you don't have the passion mm -hmm. and I think you said uh, fire within this is uh, uh, Kisaka was was talking about fire in the heart yes. so you have 
the papers, but you don't have the fire in the heart. Yeah. Mm. But can we bring change with that sort of uh, education that you are actually espousing for, Mary? No, we, we definitely can. And I'm glad you mentioned that YouTube. And everybody should go to TEDx and see that, yes. that video. Yes, uh, Ken Robinson. Yes. On, uh, yeah, just get yeah. to listen to him. A 20-minute, uh, of course, uh, talk there. Yeah, it's brilliant. Mm. You know, if you look at what technology has done today, whether it's Uber, whether it's even a lot of gadgets now in farming where they're mapping all small scale holders on, on, on map, on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. If you look at what has happened with the Mpesa app, I mean, this phone is your whole, you can mm. pay every bill on it, you can mm -hmm. transfer money, you can put money back in your bank account, you can transfer, you can pay bills. It's incredible what has happened in a space of 10 years, five years. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, it's saying that the education system we had was for the industrial age, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when machines were important. Yes. We have moved from the industrial age and countries in Africa are leapfrogging mm -hmm. things. So when we look at the education system, the approach should be, and this is uh, Fred Swanika of the African Leadership Group mm -hmm. that has been saying this, and that's why they've been very successful, is to say the approach should be to develop skills mm -hmm. that employers of this 21st century need. Mm -hmm. What do you need today? You need people who are collaborative. Yes. What mm -hmm. you was talking about mm -hmm. even in marriages. Mm -hmm. You need collaboration. It's no longer winner takes all, mm -hmm. which is one of the problems with our politics. Mm -hmm. It should be a win-win. You're collaborating. Business today, any industrial leader right. will tell you it's about collaboration. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I need just to uh, uh, cut in a bit because we have Bibiana. She's hanging on the line and she wants to step out to go to the office, but she wants to contribute as well. Let's just uh, pick uh, 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 Bibiana who's hanging on the line. Good morning, Bibiana. <laughs> Hi, Dibal. Hi, how are you? And kindly just turn down on the television, uh, the volume on your television. Then there, so can that I dim it because that is the more I can do. Yeah, yeah, please do. Not, not dim it, uh, the volume, the volume. Fantastic. Okay. Go full steam ahead, we can hear you now. Oh. Hello, Bibiana? Hello? Yeah, go full steam ahead. Uh, this is Bibiana, Dibal. Yes, yes. I always like to come and uh, come to your show, but now I can see it. Uh-huh. Yeah, hi, hi, Dibal. Yeah, hi, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, you have a contrib contribution for us? Yeah, I want to contribute now and tell you mm -hmm. the, the society we have now is like those prodigal children. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prodigal children, uh huh. Continue. The children we have, they're like prodigal children who wants to take everything, then come back and tell you, Papa, I am sorry. Mm hmm. Yes, it's true. Yeah, we, you know, a prodigal child who took everything then come back. This is the society we have at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm? Yes, I hear about you. About the morality, mm -hmm. the morality is not that, you know, people are seeing it and thinking mm -hmm. it is too much. It is even our time there was morality, it's only the population was low. Yes, yes. But now the population is more. That's so why you see many pregnancy and with the media uh, cover it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then our time, when a man used to break land you, he will marry you. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Then they will marry you. But now they give you pregnancy, then they run away. They don't want to be responsible. This is my number. If you want me to contribute life, I'm available if I'm not working. I'm running for a mass service. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Please pray for us. Bibiana, we appreciate your input this morning. You've spoken from the heart. She has to, she's a religious woman. She has to keep time, and we respect that as well. Let, let's hear from Otho from Kisumu as well, who's hanging on the line. Good morning, Otho. Oh, we've lost him. I uh, kept him for long as well. And uh, we have, lastly, a caller from Nakuru. That is Tuo. Tuo, you, you are still on the line? Good morning. Yeah. Yes, you have a question or contribution, Tuo? Yeah, I have a contribution, you know. Yeah, continue. I think um, I think our leaders are, are getting too much demoralized, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we need uh, leaders of integrity in the country, you know, mm -hmm. we need uh, proper leadership, you know, because we have so much money being spent mm -hmm. um, extravagantly, you know, and uh, and I think, you know, I, need, I think the country need to, um, to get into the real devolution. I think the money need to get into the machinani yes. and it need to be spent in the right people. You know, the people need to, the, the people, the leaders we have are just quandling the money still. You know, that's why the president is so angry with it yes, yes. because 
you know, there is too much robbers in the leadership. So <laughs> we need a lot of changes in the leadership of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thor. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And we do apologize to Thor as well. We'll get got disconnected, but we start for time. We'll just take those two callers as well. Yeah, I so, cut you. Yeah, uh, so we'll continue. say collaboration, yes. very important. The other one is communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just communicating. Mm. People have problems communicating. Mm. The level of writing even emails or letters, very bad. Being able to talk, because communication means I'm also listening to you, not waiting for you to talk, then yeah, yes, I talk. Yes, yes. So that issue of communication is very important. Problem solving. There's a problem. Problem solving. Mm, mm, mm. We really need to be problem solvers, critical thinking. Think deeper, not have these linear solutions to very complex uh, problems. You know, uh, we have accidents, so put uh, bumps. We have accidents, put uh, <laughs> speed governors. Mm -hmm. We have accidents, now we will say everybody must wear a seat belt. Those are very, that's not critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Because it, the problems is very complex. You can't have a linear solution to a very complex. It needs attacking on very many mm -hmm. different ways. <laughs> and then leadership, which is what I do, executive leadership coaching. Yes. This issue of people being able to be leaders of themselves and others. How do you coach people? How do you develop people? How do you train people? How do you counsel people? How do you mentor them to be leaders? of themselves, of their families, or whatever. And then the last one is entre entrepreneurship. Because the solution will not come in big government. It will come, as you from small business can see, is for us to produce, create value with something, create a mag, make tea, produce a good or a service. And of course, what I was talking about, technical skills. If our education can focus on this, this, these things, which Fred Swanika, and I kind of admired reading that, and the other things, but for me, that resonated with me. That is what a curriculum should really produce you at the end, because mm -hmm. you want the result. I don't want to hear about history of the war in Germany and World War I and all those other things that they're reading, Pythagoras' theorem. Who comes and applies it in today's modern whatever? These days we have phones, we have computers, we have whatever. We really need to rethink. And by the way, other countries are shaping their education system. system if you yes, go yeah. to Norway, if you go to China, if you look at the way the curriculum has changed 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we've got to do a completely round right. circle of what we're teaching. Right. Kisaka, you think the, the education will actually, as we're winding up as well, mm -hmm. will actually bring uh, those leaders that we, we, we really are really gagging for, that are exposing some virtues that yeah, we admire? You see, what education is meant to do, Dipal, and it was there in the African setting. It's just that we call it informal. Mm -hmm. But the African system had a complete educational process that, that modeled for the young people and created room for them to grow as they got involved. Actually, what you are talking about, the Asian, mm -hmm. was practiced mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. At a certain age, you knew you are the ones to take care of the cows and to water them. You knew you are the one to do this as you grew up. Mm -hmm. Now, the education system, when it was formalized, it was meant to equip people, uh, one, with international language, yes, mm -hmm. capacity to relate with people that are not of yourself, mm -hmm. so, so that then you have a common language. Two, to give them tools to interpret. That's why at graduation, the chancellor says, I give you power to read <laughs> and to, uh, to do all that appertains. Mm. You, have not, you have not achieved, you have been given tools. Mm. Go out and mm. search for the information. Mm. I'm afraid that we turned it and made it the certificate that yes. earns you a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I now have this certificate, now give me that job. Mm. It was meant to cause you to think. To empower you. Yeah, to empower you, mm -hmm. to solve problems. And as I, let me tell you, Dibal, there's so much among us that is not thinking, it's not critical thinking. Look at the way the Matatu drivers drive the Matatu. <laughs> they don't even know that it's a dangerous machine. Somebody prides himself in being able to cross the red light. You know, yes. when you look at the mentality behind mm -hmm. that thinking, he thinks it's heroic Thank you. to beat the light. Thank so we you. need education that tells us what a matatu is meant for, what a road is meant for, just these basic things and Thank put you. them in place. Or going on the pavement yes. where Thank people you. are walking. Yeah, the yes. cab crawling. Let, let, let's see from Rev uh, finally as we're winding up yes. as well. You talked ab about the destruction of merit. I think that is very pivotal to really address that merit doesn't really count in this country anymore. It is anymore. true. You can go through uh, uh, you know, the entry jobs, but you can remain there for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. People will pass mm -hmm. heads mm -hmm. and uh, be given these particular positions uh, in an organization and you are left there. Frustrating, so, yes. demoralizing. We need to uh, uh, go back as a nation to a nation that values um, merit and integrity. Um, at whatever level I may be, mm -hmm. that I know if I put in energy, effort, a commitment, I'll make it. Mm -hmm. That needs to come back. 
we really must move away from the gambling nation. Mm. Uh, and we help people to understand that that is the easiest way to get destroyed. Moving away, I mean, getting into pyramid schemes and deals and gambling, which we attend to glorify. We are glorifying a gambling nation. You know, when I think about the education system, I remember the teacher. The teacher of old mm. was the symbol of everything good out there. Mm. And he imparted not just skills, mm. he imparted the life. Mm. And we need to move away from these people who are in all manner of things, they claim to be lecturers and they're in 10 universities teaching. They are not impacting anything, imparting anything other than the book knowledge that Thank they you. carry around and the notes which were made long time ago. We need to have that teacher that taught not just with uh, academic knowledge, but he or she taught with his life. Thank you. Right. I think we should uh, stop at that uh, finally and really thank you warmly for a uh, very interesting discussion. What a treat. I really, uh, of course, enjoyed this morning. And uh, yeah, I think also, Mary, you've uh, raised an interesting topic, right? He's a manhood at, at crisis, uh, or maybe that's the wrong way to put it. Uh, yeah, yeah, not yes, it manhood. is the wrong way to put it. <laughs> both are, uh, yeah, a both, problem. Both uh, yeah, are maybe. at crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe even that trip off to my tag this morning. Wow, what a morning. But we thank you so much uh, for coming through this morning. And I think that's a topic we should handle and try and see, are they really the priests anymore? Are they the providers in there? Are they the, st the, the stabilizing figure of the home as well? Thank you very much for your valued company. My CK, uh, my director, kindly just allow me to read the last uh, tweets. There is a fountain of youth. The governor, the dreamer, is saying, it is your mind, your talent, the creativity you bring to your life and the lives of the people you love. When you learn to tap this source, you'll truly have a defeated age. Absolutely. That is what uh, Governor the Dreamer is saying. Well, let's leave it uh, at that. So much for your valid company. Thank you so much. Living with us is up next. <laughs>